Hi guys, um, we're here back, and uh, and God's been really speaking to me about sharing sharing some parts when it comes to comes to prayer and and especially the posture, but also the power of prayer and um, our position of prayer. And uh, but first, let's let's just uh, continue. We just had worship, but I just if you're not watching the worship and you're coming straight to this, we just want to give him uh, his attention that he deserved first. So. Heavenly Father, we just we just invite you right now. We thank you that you're already here. We thank you for your power and your presence. And I pray that you will touch the people watching and um, and that people would be inspired to to make their lives a prayer even more. And um thank you, God, for what you're doing in this time. Though it's it's really evident what's what the enemy is doing, but let us let us have it even more visible what you're doing, God, in this time. And, um, yeah, thank you, God. Holy Spirit, we just give you, give you all the glory, God. Give you all attention, all the honor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> I want to I want to speak to you today uh, from we're going we're gonna to go through some prayers in the Bible in the Word and some experiences that others and and myself have uh, with the power of prayer with the with the actually what comes down and what changes how how prayer changes things and one you know I could I could go for, there's so many prayers in the Old Testament there's Hannah's prayer that she's you know she's praying for the uh, the baby Samuel when she got pregnant. It's uh, John, uh, jo John's mom um, when she meets Mary and and Jesus in the womb and the prayer and the and the praise that comes out there. There's so there's so many prayers to draw from and the life of David and Daniel themselves. It's just such a powerful place of prayer, and you can see you can see Daniel like he faced down three times a day, just giving thanks and glory to God in the midst of his nation, God's people. Uh, being oppressed, uh, being captured, living in captivity. Um, even in the midst of that, he's praying and praising God three times a day. And then on top of that, when it comes illegal to pray, he's still in front of the window, praise and praise uh, every day. And But, you know, the, the, the most hardcore, uh, strange prayer, I think, um, uh, it's from, it's from Josh, Joshua 10. And we're going to go from 11, Joshua 10, 11. And, and it's Joshua prays, who prays for the sun to stop, sun and the moon to stop. So let's just, let's just go through this. And as they fled from Israel, they were, uh, while they were at the descent of Bethoran, the Lord heard large stones from heaven on them as far as Aseka, and they died. There were more who died from the highest stones than those whom the Lord, sons of Israel killed with the sword. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord on the day when the Lord turned the Amorites over to the sons of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still in Gibeon, and moon at the valley of, of Ijon. <laughs> so the sun stood still, and the moon stopped until the nation avenged themselves of their enemies. Is it not written in the book of Jassar, and the sun stopped in the middle of the sky, and did not hurry to go down about the whole day? And this this is like a, a place where Israel, in the middle of conquering their, their land, in the middle of coming in and, and, and occupying Israel, and there, there's a war going on, and they're driving out extremely wicked people. That are you know it, uh, God says that I I chased the, those out because they did certain things. One of them was to send their their babies through fire, and and in the midst of this, uh, Joshua sees that okay we won, we are winning, but we want it. We don't want a sixty percent victory. We want a hundred percent victory, and he's praying a prayer that he has no clue what he prays about. You know he he didn't know back then. That the Earth is a globe, and that the Moon and the Sun is far, far, far away, and the Earth spins. 
So what he prayed for was actually to, that the whole rotation of the Earth stop spinning. And if that's if the rot the rotation of Earth is like a thousand kilometer an hour or a little more, and if that stops suddenly, the atmosphere will just <laughs> drag everything down and destroy everything. The winds that will come from that. So everything had to stop. And even if you stand still and you you hit you hit something and you go hundred kilometer an hour, you fly off because. That's, that's the momentum that takes place. So God had to freeze time completely in that place, except the people. And it's just, it's just an incredible, incredible answer to a prayer that's going on there. And he has, this is the most bold prayer that's ever been prayed, <laughs> if you ask me. And it's the most, uh, it's the most biggest miracle of a prayer answer that I find in the world, at least in my understanding, it's, it's this one prayer. And it's the power of knowing you're in God's favor and praying from that place. Knowing you're in God's will and praying from that place. Now, I haven't, I haven't experienced anything similar to that, uh, but I've experienced some really, really powerful stuff happening um, through being in that position of knowing, knowing, knowing I heard God's voice, knowing I know his heart, and to just pray from that place. And um, and when it comes to when it comes to prayer, you know, in um, when when we pray towards the enemy, we pray with authority. And but when we pray towards people, we pray in love and humility. And and that's that's a bit like I, it's it's a big difference in, in that place. Um. Anyways, so I I would I would um be um there was this season in my life where we had this incredible outpouring in, in the youth work that I was youth pastoring in. And um and where where, you know, kids were hanging out to five AM after the church service or the, the youth service. And you know I just remember I remember this so powerful. This one girl in the youth work, um she was just dancing with the Holy Spirit down the hallway. Just completely, you could see she was not even she was not even <laughs> aware of what's going on around her. She was completely lost in his presence, and and lost in love with the Holy Spirit. And it was just really, really, really powerful uh, at that time. And in in that time, I there was a certain certain thing on on me towards seeing things happening <laughs> in the kingdom, if I can say it that way. And at work. Um, uh, I I would I would I think it was four months. I haven't spoken much about this particular thing, but it was in about four months time that I would I would go outside and it would pour when it poured down. I was I was a stop in Jesus name because I'm gonna work outside <laughs> and the rain would just sh shut down and I could work outside and go and my my coworkers saw this and they were like shaking their heads <laughs> like this guy is crazy. <laughs> What's going on with this guy? And then. And you know th this is this is um, this is the power of prayer, and um, the power of prayer comes from the position we're in. It comes from the position we pray for, and I I, t I talked about this um, several times. How uh, we can't exchange um, um, methods with or r relationship with methods. It's not about the words we speak. It's not about this, you know, I heard people like, oh, if you pray this way, if you pray, a prayer should go like this, bam, 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 bam. You should start with giving thanks to God. You should start with that. And then you move over to the issue and then you will over cover everything in the blood. You know, all of those are good, good principles and biblical principles when it comes to um, the theology of prayer, the, the place in that place. But it's it's that's not the point. Uh, it's 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 great. It's good teaching. It's I'm not I'm not coming against it. I'm just saying it doesn't help to do all those things in the right way if you not if your position is not in Him. It doesn't help to have the right word if you have the wrong heart. It doesn't help to have the right um, uh, right even uh, routines in your day and and your right prayer routines throughout the day. If, if you don't have the heart and the relationship, where it's coming from, where we're praying from. And, and Joshua, you know, he was blessed by Moses to come and conquer the land. And he followed God's voice. And he prayed from that place. We, we are in victory. And he prayed from victory 
to see the victory completed. And then, yeah, it's, um, it's fascinating to me, that part. Um, and then we have, um, yeah, and also, also actually, I want to share another, another testimony too. There's, there's, a, there's another time where, uh, where we had, me and, me and Finn is a guy that I worked with when it comes to developing land and, and building houses. And um, and he we we ran into this project and this problem with this project. We had a specific person that would be super against the project, you know. Would, and and uh, there's there's certain requirements and rules to follow in Norway uh, when, to deadlines and stuff when it comes to complaining. So we we applied with this project. We're gonna build it, and one of the neighbors she's like, I'm gonna go against this with everything I have, and she would she would like wait until the final day deadline and then she would run in a complaint because she knew she couldn't stop it but she's going to go for against it and postpone it as hard as she could and she waited as long as possible and then bam in with like really harsh complaint and then that was fixed and then she waited until the final deadline until she didn't and then she she kind of researched how she can make this you know stop this as, as far as possible kind of uh, you know, if if she can't get her her way, then she's gonna basically try to squeeze the fa- squeeze the finances out, so we're not able to build. Basically, um, so she kept on doing this for two years, and you know, and when me and Finn, we prayed and we prayed and we prayed, and and one day, I I called him over the phone, and I'm like, you know what? Now we're gonna pray. Now we're gonna pray from the place of faith. I've just been in worship, just in that place of adoration and worship. And I'm like, now we're going to pray from that place of of just declaring what God's, what's God's heart and God's will in this. Because we know what his heart and will in this. Because his, his heart, Finn's heart, it's, it's a good friend of mine, He his heart is to fi- financially support uh, revivalists in Norway and evangelists. So his, his first goal is to pay uh, 20 evangelists in Norway to evangelize in Norway uh, so, so they can be a full-time ministry uh, that that's his heart like he's, he's an incredible guy uh, for the kingdom and um, and so we're praying you know I pray that this person would start to speak just as possibly positively for the project as he's been going against it just as passionately for the project as he's been going against it you know i i pray that prayer and i remember Finn was like oh well i don't have faith for that one because <laughs> we've been kind of hitting hitting the wall for two years and and uh, and then suddenly uh, must have been it must have been like less than less than less than a couple of weeks she calls Finn and she brags about the project and she brags about it to the newspaper, to the politicians, to all that stuff. She completely turned around. We have no idea what happened, <laughs> like other than that we prayed and things just completely turn around. And, um, and um, that, that's, that's, this is, I just want to share a little of the power of actually what happens when we pray. It changes uh, physical stuff. We, we know about miracles. I'm also talking about the sun and the moon. Like it, it actually has the power over physical stuff and the earth and, and the realm that the physical, physically realm that we live in. It also has the power to turn hearts, it, it, to turn uh, people's position. It's, 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 not, it's not about changing people's will. It's about praying that God will speak to their hearts and that they wouldn't be able to continue the way they do. And um, so let's let's think about that in the prayer for Norway and for the politicians and for things. You know, let's actually pray the change in. You know, uh, I have a I have a friend of mine who's uh, he's he went to our youth ministry and he was touched by the Lord through our youth ministry, and he became a priest afterwards. And I actually got the honor of together with uh, the bishop and a couple other priests to ordain him into a priest. Uh, I don't know how we pull that off, but because I'm not, I'm not an educated pastor and an educator, like had an education on, in that way anyway. But I was, I was allowed to be a part of, uh, of doing. It was an incredible honor for me, and and he he shared, you know, sometimes I don't know if God knows how to answer the prayer we pray in the stage church because we say we pray for Israel. Yeah, but what what do we pray <laughs> for Israel? <laughs> like we pray for Norway. Yeah, but actually, what do we pray? How do I answer that prayer? Like 
It's like uh, me praying for my wife. God, I pray for Lindsay. And God is like, I have, I want to answer your prayer, but I'm going to answer this one. And I think I think sometimes we actually, we, we, we have to tune into him and actually pray solutions. Pray into, uh, pray changes in. Actually declare his will into things. Declare his power into things. And if we don't know what his will is, then we seek him without we seek his face, we seek his heart, and we speak what he puts on our heart over this thing. You know, I, I believe in praying, yeah, let your will be done. I believe in that, yes. But sometimes I also think it's really important to, God, what is your will? Let's declare your will into this. Um, huh. And then also directional prayers. In Samuel, Second Samuel uh, chapter 5, and we have this situation uh, where David comes to, he comes to um, back from back from war, or he was supposed to join the war, and he didn't get to, and he was sent back, and um, he comes back, and his whole camp is raided. Uh, I think it's like four hundred people that are following him, and the whole camp is raided. The wives and the children, and all their stuff are gone. You know, and these guys, faithful people that's been following David and that David has trained, you know, they were, they were the people that was not a part of society that was not looked at. It was looked at the trash, but David took them and trained them. And these guys, uh, been following David for 10 years in the wilderness while Saul's been persecuting them. And they've been, they've been following him in there, been following him around, following him everywhere. And then when David, decided let's go into the enemy's camp they're like okay we'll just follow this guy <laughs> you know they're following him into the enemy's enemy's camp but then when they're f- in the enemy's land and their camp has been robbed of their wives children everything then they're talking about stoning david they're like okay what have we actually done there we've followed this guy everywhere and and you know the only thing we've experienced is loss after loss after loss after loss and a lifestyle that is not i can just picture what they feel in this place and and uh, and you know they they don't have the word and the story of david to read they're living that story and and they don't know what's right or not they don't they don't you know they only have the words of david and and the heart they have to follow him you know, and um, and David is like, he's like, you know what? I'm going to put off the garment, put on the garment of worship, the garment of praise. And then he sits down and he takes a staff and he inquires of the Lord. And he asks, God, should we follow after these ones? Are we going to win? Are we going to take them in? Like, And God answers them, yes, follow them. And And this is also such a powerful place. Because David is in his, like, he has he has the word, he has all these right words and all this right stuff. But, and he has the favor of the Lord upon him, but everything goes against him. You know, like, he's, he's, been, he's been chased for 10 years, he's, he's camping in the enemy's land. And I don't know what faith he has left in the word that God has given him. And, and you know, it's, it's a huge invitation to doubt the Lord. That's for sure. Yeah, like this major invitation to give up completely. Because he's even fallen so far that he hides from Saul in in the country of the of the of the enemy. And which is incredible in itself because he refused to go against Saul. He'd rather hid in the country of the enemy than than curse the one that God has anointed, even though he behaved like a <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, not gonna describe his behavior. But and he's he's he rather chose to camp in the camp of the enemy than cursing the one that God has anointed, despite his thick behavior. And then, and David was there, and he and then he um, then everything is rubbed from him, and uh, also the people that that has been running with him comes against him and wants to take him out. You know, in that place, he goes on his knees, he puts on the garment of worship, and he prays for directions from that place. This is what faithfulness looks like. This is what faithfulness looks like. In the middle of all 
the stuff coming against you, you're still being faithful to God. You still ask for his directions. You still ask for this place. And, and this this is this is more of the position of prayer than than the power of prayer. But God answers, and eventually He becomes the king. And um, it's uh, yeah, David's life is just so incredible to read about. And um, and then we have this um, this third thing that I want to mention before we go over into the Lord's prayer, and that is. Um, uh, Daniel, he he is such a man of prayer, and um, and you know he, as I shared earlier, he would pray three times a day. He would like go a bit for the window and just bow down and pray, and then it comes to this part where he actually intercedes. It's it's the power of intercession, I will say, where he intercedes. It's it's such a if if you feel like God has given you a place of intercession, if you feel like He has he has um, what can I say? calling you to pray for this nation, calling you to intercede. Then Daniel's book is incredible to read. Um, I'm gonna find this. So um, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read through this. I probably stop and give some comments. It is a long part of scripture, so please just just pay attention and just just uh, stay in it. Uh, we're going to read Daniel chapter 9. Um, I think we're going to start from uh, verse 2. <clears throat> In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures, according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem would last 70 years. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition, in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. Now, this is how Daniel responds to a word that he finds in the scriptures. Now, remember, the Bible was not put there yet. Uh, it was not put together. This, was a, this, this would be like... Um, reading something from Smith Wigglesworth or or others, you know, this this was actually how it was for him, was to read about uh, revivalists, you know, and their words and what they've been saying. Uh, he, he didn't have the Bible in that that way yet. He was living living that story, and um, and what he read, he he read that this this occupation of Israel should last only seventy years. And he's been li there's been 70 years now. And he realized, oh, it's the time. And instead of thinking, oh, it's the time, God got this. You know, it's going to end now. I'm just like completely relaxing. His response to realizing that it's time. And his response to realizing this prophet has spoken about this situation. And now it's time for this to come through. His response to that was to go into fasting and praying and pleading with the Lord. Like instead of instead of staying on the sideline and watching the time, he's like, "Oh, it's this time. I'm gonna respond to this word." And whenever we read in the word now, you know, people people reading all this kind of stuff into like when when we live in the situation we are now, it's not it's not hard to start to read into certain things in the scripture and thinking, "Oh, this is coming," you know, "this is coming," and I think when God reveals something, our response to his revealing in the scripture about this time that we're in now, it should lead us to our knees. It should lead us in prayer and fasting. And and yeah, we can have excitement, we can have all that stuff, but 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 Daniel's response was to go down and pray and intercede for the nation. And you know, when I read the word, like all all people should bow their knees before him. And when I read the word, like every tongue will confess and and every and every yeah you know when i read those scriptures that that about his the spirit will be pulled poured out all flesh you know i can choose to oh that's awesome and just sit down and wait for it or i can choose to pray into that and invite that season into the time right now and sometimes i think even 
I look at prophetic words as as an invitation. You know, I have all these kinds of words spoken over me. It's it's crazy that the words I received from people and and it's coming from all over the place. Now I haven't seen those things yet. Uh, but but my my posture isn't to sit down and just like okay let's wait and see when this comes you know I'm I'm gonna hit, keep on hitting the water so to speak I'm gonna keep on just going after it and and staying in that what God's called me and no matter and no matter how big of influence I have like it, it's not about that it's about I'm responding to what is spoken over me I'm not the one to see that come through He's gonna see that come through but I'm not gonna stay on the sideline and just wait until it happens either I'm gonna respond. And, and live into and kind of, um, oh, I want to uh, let, let, let be impregnated, impregnated with the word that's been spoken over me to actually act on it. It's, it's um, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's the best way I can. <laughs> let, let's, let's read through this. Uh, we, we go to uh, verse 4. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed. O Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with all who love him and obey his commands, we have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princesses, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Now, <clears throat> this this is this is really really important uh, position of prayer when we intercede. Like like Daniel, he he actually put himself in the position of his people, though him he himself didn't do any of this stuff that he's saying. But he says, "We, we, we." And you know, Jesus interceded for us on the cross. He took our place on the cross. So when we go into intercession, we actually we actually take on uh, the stuff that we're praying for. And as being in that position, as being in this person's shoes, I'm praying from that place. You know, um, and and to to do that, I think it's so important to actually. I'm not, I'm not carelessly interceding for someone far away in another country over there. I'm actually putting myself in their shoes, in their position, and I pray for us from that place. And I think that's a big key for intercession to see actually things happening. You know, we don't want to be like the pride guy, proud guy that stands there and like, thank you, God, that I'm not a sinner like that guy. And thank you for me being holy and all that stuff. And then the other guy, the sinner, he stays there. God, be merciful to the sinner. And Jesus says, the one with the one that prayed for be merciful to the sinner is the one that goes for that sin. The other one is judged. And we don't want to, we don't want to be that position when we intercede and pray. We want to take, you know, I'm gonna take this burden on me and I'm gonna pray from that place. Because when I am in those shoes, I have the power to release things into that position. Anyways. Um <clears throat> Verse 7, Lord, you are righteous, but this day we are covered with shame. The men of Judah and the people of Jerusalem and all Israel, both near and far, in all the countries where you have scattered us because of our unfaithfulness to you. O Lord, we and our kings, our princes and our fathers are covered with shame because we have sinned against you. The Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the Lord our God or kept the laws he gave us through his servants, the prophets. All Israel has transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey you. Therefore, the curses and sworn judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against you. You have fulfilled the words spoken against us and against our rulers for bringing upon us a great disaster under the whole heaven. Nothing has ever been done like what has been done to Jerusalem. Just that it is written in the law of Moses, all the disasters has come upon us. Yet we have not sought the favor of the Lord our God by turning from our sins 
and giving attention to your truth. The Lord did not hesitate to bring the disaster upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in everything he does, yet we have not obeyed him. Now, O Lord our God, who brought your people out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and who made for yourself a name that endures to this day, we have sinned, we have done wrong. O Lord, in keeping with all your righteous acts, turn away your anger from our, and your wrath from Jerusalem, your city, your holy hill. Our sins and iniquities of our fathers have made Jerusalem and your people an object of scorn to all those around us. Now, our God, hear the prayers and petitions of your servant. For your sake, O Lord, look with favor on your desolate sanctuary. Give ear, O God, and hear. Open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name. We do not make requests of you because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. O Lord, listen. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hear and act. For your sake, O my God, do not delay, because your city and your people bear your name. Now, reading through this prayer, it's interesting to see that he actually didn't pray once what the prophet said, and that it has been 70 years, it's time. He just pleaded with God. And and I think I think God really invites us to this place now to, to start pleading with him, to start being in this, in this position. And be drawn, allow yourself to be drawn by the Spirit to see the power of God move. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, um, this, this takes a longer time than I thought it would. <laughs> but, um, uh, um, luckily, since we're streaming, if you want to break, you can just hit pause and come back and watch more. <laughs> um, let me find, let me find the Lord's Prayer. Okay, we're, we're going to read, we're going to read the parts before the Lord Prayers pops up. Uh, cause, cause, um, Jesus, Jesus, you know, when, when you read the word, it's a whole context, and it's when you just pick up certain parts, you might miss something before and after, and and it starts with with um, uh, Matthew six verse one. Take care not to practice your righteousness in the sight of people, to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. So when you give to the poor. Do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets so that, that they will be praised by people. Truly I say to you, they have already had their reward in full. But when you give to the poor, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that you cherubot, ch 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 yeah. so that your giving will be in secret. <laughs> And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And then, so he talks about this, this hot attitude. Take, take care not to practice your righteousness. In front. Take care that you not practice things in the kingdom to be honored uh, for the sake of being honored by people. So, so then he talks about prayer. And when you pray, you're not to be like the hypocrites because they love to stand and pray in the synagogue and on the street corners so that they will be seen by people. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. But as for you, when you pray, go into your inner room, close your door and pray to your father who sees in secret. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you are praying, do not use thoughtless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. So do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. And we're going to go into the Lord's Prayer here, but this 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 is the position of prayer, and 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 um, you know, there's there's a, we we Christians we live in a different time, where than it was back when Jesus was around. 
you know, if you're praying on the street corner, people would like, oh, this this is a holy man. And they were kind of, yay. If you're today in the streets of Oslo and you're praying loud in the street corner, people won't go and honor you. <laughs> they will think you're crazy. And, <laughs> and, it, and, and we, so when we pray on the street corner now, like, it's actually not an act of trying to be liked. It's actually an act of boldness because people are not going to like you. And so we, we like to use the excuse of praying, praying away hidden because we're embarrassed of God. Now, that's the wrong heart attitude again. This, this is not an example about directions. This is about directions from a heart attitude to, to protect your heart. Um, and anyways, pray then in this way. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and give us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive other people for their offenses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your heavenly Father will not forgive you. Give your offenses. No, and deliver us from all evil. This this is how it ends in, in Matthew. It's a little longer in, in I think in, in in Luke. But um but I wanna I wanna I wanna speak a little about this because we uh, I've heard so many the- theories or the- theolo- theolog- theological perspective on the Lord's Prayer that because he actually says, Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And you know, Jesus didn't joke around when they asked us to pray for his will to be done on earth and to pray that it will be as it is in heaven. You know, people try to make this something it's not, that, oh, it's just that his will is in heaven, so let's pray that his will be in earth too. That doesn't mean that we will see miracles. That doesn't mean that, you know, it's, it's just a bunch of earthly perspectives on the word. I don't want the earthly perspective on the word. I don't want the earthly perspective on prayer. I want the heavenly perspective on prayer. That I want the place that actually changed things because that's what he has for us. He has for us to, to live a transformed life and through our transformed life, transform the sphere around us. And through transforming the sphere around us, eventually transforming the earth and the nations. That That's what he longs for us to live into. That's what he has for us. But it requires to be completely surrendered to him. And to live a lifestyle of prayer. We actually have this group called Make Your Life a Prayer. Uh, and if you want to know more about it, uh, just just message message me on anst at ztfoslo.no. We're going to eventually change our email addresses because we're new release now. But that will come eventually. Um, and this last testimony I want to share with you before, before we finish in prayer. Um, <clears throat> In this season, uh, I talked about four months earlier where, where God just poured out his Holy Spirit in such a powerful way. Um, he, he showed me this is only a foretaste of what he has for me and what he has for this nation. And that, that he, wants to, he wants to really come with his power and, and just meet people. You know, I'm I'm not going to give up going after his power. I'm not going to give up going after people being transformed by his love and his power. Because if people being transformed by words, they will be de-transformed by words too. But if they... It's like I shared yesterday. Like, the car accident made me realize that I've been given my life and I want to surrender my life to him. It's not the car accident that keeps me in that place. It's just encountering his love and power that keeps me in the place of complete surrender. Um now um <clears throat> uh, yeah this this four months while I was while I was in this place and, and uh, pastoring in this church uh I am um, I was praying we were praying constantly uh, all the time um and I was praying I would get up at night 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. and just pray in tongues downstairs in the church and go to bed again and then go to work and then come home and get up 2 a.m., pray for two hours, 
get go to bed again, and, and I'll continue doing that, praying in tongues downstairs. And the, the presence of the Lord was so powerfully in the in those four four or five months. I remember that's you know thinking back. I think it's four or five. It might be half a year. I'm not completely sure. I got lost of <laughs> lost of the time. The, nothing really mattered on the other than just his presence at that time. And and um. <clears throat> Uh, we, I was praying one time in the beginning of this and God showed me he showed me how how prayer is supposed to be like and I I uh, I was just like praying for revival I've always been praying for revival that's that's one thing I'm you know I'm gonna I believe that revival will come tomorrow and in 30 years I will still believe that revival will come tomorrow <laughs> because that's that I, I, this, this is the position and the decision that I made before him I'm gonna expect your move tomorrow all the time because I'm not gonna give up that position and that posture because so I'm gonna be faithful to what you've spoken to me and um and then I had this um, <clears throat> um encounter with the Lord where I prayed and you know praying striving praying and I'm like, oh God, you know, just come and do it. And I'm like, just praying and, and striving. And I felt like, you know, I was pushing and, and I didn't feel it, you know, you know, you're kind of praying and you're trying to break the sound barrier or the spiritual barrier to actually start feeling and start to engage in with your spirit. And I'm like, you know, praying and suddenly I'm caught up into this vision and I'm climbing this castle wall and it's dark and it's raining and it's really heavy. You know everything, and I'm like with pickaxes, just climbing up this wall, and I'm I'm coming to the top, and suddenly I feel a hand grabbing me and lifting me up, and I'm like, oh, who's this guy? You know, lifting me up, and and he lifts me up on over the castle, the castle wall, and I, and it's Jesus holding my hand, lifting me up, and he com only communicated to me through thoughts. I know many people that, are, that met Jesus, they they have this encounter where he's communicating, but there's no words involved. There's only thoughts. And you can kind of feel his thoughts coming in and you know what he's saying and what he's doing. And it's it's bigger than words. Um, yeah, it's very hard to describe. It's big, it's way more efficient way to communicate than using words. And, um, and, he, um, and I just knew that I entered into his peace. And and he, he lifted me up, he took me closer, and he went back, and he, you know, he kind of took me in his arms, and I knew he wanted me to just lay down in his arms. And he took me in his arm and held me like this. And I became like the size of an infant, the size of a, of a baby in his arms. But still me, the way I, look, I didn't turn into, I just, I don't know if he grew in size or if I shrank in size or whatever. I, I knew that I was completely entrusted uh, by him and I was completely trusting in him. And there was this trust exchange going on. And um, and um, and I, 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 I want to say heard him say, but I, it was these thoughts coming. I knew he wanted me now to pray from this place. You know, I pray from this position, trying to reach up, trying to break through something up there. But then he lifted me up in his arms and he held me in this safe, safe position completely in him. And I knew, okay, you try to pray from that striving position. Now pray from this position. And I'm like, okay. And I started to pray with the same passion, uh, with the same heart, with the same, I would say, even more passion. Like, doesn't mean that it's loud or quiet or whatever. It was just so powerful. And I started praying the same stuff. I prayed for, I prayed for revival. I prayed for, for him to come through. I prayed for, uh, I prayed for the nation. I prayed for the city that I was in. And, and as I was praying, these gold letters appeared in front of me. And I could see the prayer being written on this, like, uh, invisible scroll in front of me. And as I prayed, I just saw the letters coming and, and the words coming as I prayed them out. And and I was like, oh, that's amazing, you know, like he it's actually imprinted in heaven. When we pray, when I pray for I realized then this I realized then that as I was in this position, this is the position of prayer, in him, completely in trust in him, and my heart resonated with his, and his heart resonated with mine. 
And I'm from that place started to pray and declare his will. It was imprinted on heaven. And I saw this, I saw this being written. Um, and then when I was done praying, Jesus grabbed the pen and he signed the prayer in his name. And it was rolled down and sent to the Father. And I'm like, whoa, what's going on here, God? And I realized, you know, that, that this is actually what happens when we pray from this position completely in him. You know, we, we, can, we can pray for this and that, and we can have a routine to how we pray and stuff. I sometimes have a routine to how I pray and all that stuff, but, but it's, it's about the position I'm placed in when I'm in relationship with him. You know, when I'm in that place, I'm, I'm, not, able to be, I'm not able to be touched by the enemy. And first of all, and secondly, when I pray, or actually turn it around, first of all, when I pray, <laughs> and when I declare stuff, I'm in his will, in him, and things are moving, things are shifted, things are imprinted on heaven, and they're signed by Jesus Christ in his name, because we're praying in his name. And, and that's, that's how a prayer in his name look like. It's signed by his name. And it's, it's like, and it's sent to the Father. And, and uh, it's just an amazing, amazing experience. And, and he taught me so much through this. Now, I, I found myself having to relearn this throughout life. And so probably so do you, so do others. But you relearn this when you mem- remember what he's taught you. And you can see, you can see this in, in the Israel stories. And, and throughout the word in the Old Testament, remember the God who delivered you from Egypt. The God who, you know, and it talks about those miracles again and again. How many times are those miracles mentioned through the word? It's, it's incredible. Many, 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 many times. I don't have the number in front of me because I'm just speaking about this. I didn't plan on saying this. But, but uh, you know, the enemy tricks us so many times that, oh, that's an old move of God. Or that's the old word that I got from a year ago, 10 years ago, 20, 30, you know, or that's, that's something that the Lord did that long ago. And you kind of, it's kind of trying to depower, depower, if I can say it that way, the, the power of the miracles that's been done is trying to denounce it. It's trying to lower the miracles in your life. But actually, the word talks about remembering what he has done all the time. And I'm telling you, if you have a testimony, don't get tired of sharing your testimony because the enemy will trick you into that's an old testimony. No, that's, that's the power of God in your life and he's outside time. That testimony is as strong today as it was back then. But the enemy tries to lure you to think that, oh, that's an old thing. No, remember the things that God has done in your life. Remember the things he's taught you and stay in that position of remembrance and being taught by him. Ah, anyways, <laughs> the, this is a bonus in the end there. But um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I, I, I thank you so much for what you're revealing uh, to me and through me now. And to these people listening, God. Also, I pray that, that the prayer lives will be reawakened in people. That they will be start to be positioned in you. To be like a child in you and to hear your voice, that you will start interacting with them and, and correspond with them, God, and that your heart would be theirs and their heart would be yours, Lord. And I pray for um, many testimonies to rise from this, of people changing the way they pray, of people coming before you, of people staying in prayer, Lord. Father, you're calling your church to go into prayer. You're calling your church to go into prayer. Oh, yeah. I, I just I'm just remember this I feel like the Lord is reminding me right now of of one thing it's it's the Azusa Street revival and um, and Seymour uh, the guy who who led that revival he would he would pray seven hours a day and he would come down to do church services and he would go up and pray again and you know you can you can read through I, I talked about Smith Wiggles work last time just position yourself in that place of prayer but it's it's in him. Position yourself in him and from that place, stay in prayer. Please, please, please. It's, it's what the Lord has for this nation now. Because now is the time for revival 
but it's going to happen when we, the church, respond to the word that's been given for 30 years over this North nation now. So bless you. Um, and uh, um, yeah, we're going to have a prayer meeting at 6 o'clock tonight. If you want to be a part of it, please, please, please join. Um, and we're going to send out link on emails and also in the chat here. Bless you. See you tonight.